Hey everybody, I seem to be on a little bit of a spalted maple kick here. I believe this tree was a sugar maple, and it's not the same one that I did the little squat pot from. I'm going to put it between centers and try and get it lined up to do a natural edge. You can't see it very well, but what I've got going here is just a little cheap laser pointer that I'm holding on the tool rest and using to help me line up the, the two tallest wings. One of the things that I like about maple trees is that you get this sort of scalloped edge sometimes and it makes for really interesting natural edge bowls. So I'm taking a little extra time here to try and get the tallest of those wings lined up as close as I can so that they'll be relatively even when I get finished. Close enough. Because there are so many holes, partially from me moving the centers around and partially because this blank has a lot of what are probably ant holes, I marked the ones that I decided on with a blue sharpie. I don't like using my tailstock to force the blank into the spur drive. I have a tendency to have some issues with that, so I'm just using a chisel to enlarge the slots where the drive pins are going to go and that will help me make sure I get a good bite on this blank before I start spinning it. I'm using that little pivot cut to help me get through some of these uneven spots. The spot where that branch is may give me a little trouble. Even though this blank is a little wet, my plan at this point is to just go ahead and finish turn it all in one shot and see how badly it warps. I'm a little surprised at how punky some of the spots are. You can see the spot where that branch was is kind of gray. I don't care about the discoloration, but that entire area there is really kind of punky, so I'm just going to keep cutting until I get through it.
At this point, I've got pretty much the whole blank round, and I'm going to keep trying to get rid of that punky spot from the branch and also just work on refining the shape. Fortunately, the placement of the branch is kind of on the corner where it's going to be mostly cut away anyway. The tips of the wings are pretty punky, but I've mostly gotten rid of the bad spot from the branch. It's a little hard to see, but this blank is full of bug holes and bug trails. The shape is mostly sorted out, so I'm going to go ahead and make my tenon. And I've started leaving a shoulder, like Kent Weekly from Turn of Wood Bowl does. That saves me sometimes if I get a little excited when I'm hollowing out or working on the bottom of a bowl. It gives me a little bit of extra space before I make a funnel. And I usually end up using it as the foot. I'm using my smallest bowl gouge here to do a little shear scraping just to kind of see if I'm going to get a real clean finish on this or not. Since my initial plan was basically to turn this green, I went ahead and made the tenon a little bit smaller to fit in the chuck more accurately. Hopefully that's not going to come back and bite me. I've pretty much stopped using my G3 chuck with the spindle adapter and I'm just using my Supernova 2 and I'm leaving the small jaws on it for right now. Since there are so many bug holes and trails in this blank, I'm not going to be able to use an abrasive sanding paste on it because I would have to pick that out of all of these little spots. So I have some milliput, which is a two-part epoxy, and I'm going to try and fill these in and see if I can get a smooth surface that then I can finish more easily. 
The milliput says it'll scent underwater, so the fact that this blank is still a little wet shouldn't have any impact on that. There are some really interesting lines running along here, and I have no idea if that's something to do with the fact that this is a sugar maple tree. Um, I really, I've, I've never seen that before, even on any of the other maple pieces that I've worked on. This was a giant pain in my behind. So this is the milliput. I have turquoise, it comes in lots of different colors. And it's basically just a two-part putty type epoxy. You cut off equal pieces of both parts and then knead them together until you have a uniform color, which takes kind of a long time. I wasn't sure how this was going to look, or even if it was going to work, but I decided to give it a shot. So I mixed it up and I just pushed it down into as many of the little cracks and crevices and holes as I could. I was surprised how sticky it was. I tried several things and I thought this would work. This is a number two HDPE dowel and it stuck to that too. So I wrapped it with a little bit of plastic wrap and then used that dowel to kind of roll it out and try to smash it down into the voids. And I let it sit overnight. I actually think it looks pretty cool. It just didn't really work out as well in this application as I was hoping. I definitely want to use it in some turnings. I think that it would be really a great option for filling voids rather than using liquid resin. What I think I needed was something that was a little thinner consistency, more like a paste almost, that I could just smear in the whole thing and let it harden. Because mostly what I was after was just trying to fill the voids to get a smooth surface. I didn't necessarily care if it was a contrasting color, but I didn't want to use like Minwax wood putty. At this point, I decided it would just be better to rough turn it and put it in the kiln. And then once it dried, I could come back and see how I wanted to deal with the bug holes and things. Dear camera, what are you focusing on? I'm still surprised that the moisture meter read 23% because this did not cut like it was wet. Uh, you can see there's a lot of powdery stuff coming off. The punkier spots definitely felt like they were pretty dry. And I don't know how long this tree had been dead. The stump was still standing and somebody had cut it off. I don't even know how long ago. There was no bark on the tree and the pieces that were on the ground had been cut into I don't know, maybe two foot sections. And you know, it looked like it had been there quite a while. So I was really surprised when I put the moisture meter on it and it read so high. I have a couple of other pieces of this and I may just go ahead with one of the other ones and 
finish turn it all in one shot and see how it comes out. There were some decent cracks in it, so I decided to put some thin CA glue in those before I put it in the kiln, and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. I do love me some spalted maple, and I was really pleased with how the hollow forms turned out. I bought Lyle Jameson's hollowing system this week, so one of my next projects is definitely going to be using that. So stick around and see how that goes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, y'all be safe out there. And how about Marla Hooch? What a hitter.